tape for our co-main event between Michelle Rivera and Fidel Maldonado Jr. Gentlemen, as you observe the numbers, what shines for you? Uh, just a 10-year pro, 10-year and four-year pro career. I think uh, Maldonado uh, is coming to fight. He said he's really prepared for this fight. He's going to show the young boy that he can, he can get at him too. Yeah, lots of experience there for. Uh, Maldonado, the Riviera, you know, 17 wins, zero losses, 11 KOs. That looks very impressive to me just looking at the stats. Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues here at the Bull Ravage Resort and Casino here in Biloxi, Mississippi. We now have 10 rounds in the lightweight division brought to you by TGB Promotions in association with Samson Boxing, sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. Your three judges scoring this bout at ringside will be Bill Clancy, Jay Dees, and David Toronto. The referee in charge when the bell sounds is Keith Hughes. Introducing to you first fighting out of the red corner, he comes in wearing the purple trunks with the gold. Weighing in officially at 134 and one half pounds. His record, 27 wins, four losses, one draw, 20 wins coming by way of knockouts. Joining us from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing yeah. Fidel, the yeah. Atrisco Kid, Maldonado yeah. Jr. Yeah. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the colors of the Dominican Republic, red, white, and blue, weighing in officially at 134 and one half pounds. As a professional, he's perfect. 17 wins, 11 of those coming by way of a knockouts. Fighting out of Santo Domingo, República Dominicana, by way of Miami, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated Michelle Lazarza Rivera. All right, guys, I've already given you instructions in the dressing room. I remind you to listen to me at all times. When I say stop, you stop. Watch the shots here, watch the low blows. No holding, guys. All right, shake hands. Good luck. God bless both of you. Michelle Rivera, who is perfect, looks to continue in his winning ways, but tonight we just saw Ray Wajardo, his O win. What is going to happen with Rivera and Fidel Maldonado Jr.? Maldonado, a veteran, has been a pro for over 10 years. He's in the midst of a three-fight win streak. Maldonado, a southpaw conventional, is Rivera. Rivera led by Samson Lukowitz, who is a tremendous fight finder. He discovered the likes of Manny Pacquiao, also Sergio Martinez as well. And he's quite high on the 21-year-old in Michelle Rivera, who's been a pro for going on four years now. Ah, uh, stop! Yeah, stop. Martinaro said step back, he, step back. he's coming to fight. He never seen Box. anybody like him. So we'll see what he do, does, you know, in these early rounds. Well, for Rivera, he previously defeated undefeated prospect Rene Hiron back in June in his U.S. debut. And incidentally, Hiron gave Carlos Barderas, the 2016 U.S. Olympian, a loss back in December. So it just goes to show you the kind of opposition that Rivera has fought as he got into the United States. Yeah, Rivera, he stated yesterday that he's a, a smart boxer, even though he's 21 years old. He said he would like to give him some body work this fight. And, um, you know, he's young, he's eager, he's trying to make a name. So he also stated that he would love to uh, end this show with a knockout. But he's in there with a crafty veteran, uh, Maldonado, you know, 10 years of professional experience. You know, we've seen what that has done in the past. He said he believes that he has a few crafty tricks up his sleeves to make the young fighter feel uncomfortable tonight. Well, Anthony Michel Rivera is motivated after seeing his fellow countrymen, a man who he says is like a brother, Jason Rosario, upset Julian Williams and become a world champion. 
He said it was amazing. It did a lot for the Dominican Republic, and he wants Stop. to follow suit. No punches. He, he do. Step he back, said. Back. Come on, he guys. said three or more fights, and he want that world title fight. So he, he he he's looking for a world title fight, and he's coming here tonight to look for his win. Rivera just landed a nice combination. Maldonado was smiling, but Keith, typically that's an indication that you are hurt. Oh, well, I won't always say that's an indication that you're hurt, but it's an indication that you acknowledge what just happened. <laughs> Maldonado enjoying himself in the ring, but Rivera is stepping right to and being more the aggressor here in our co-feature. And Rivera has been working on his English. He was engaging in the fighter meeting, speaking to us in English. He knows how important it is to try to be a crossover star, and that's why he picked it up. Yeah, Maranaro got 20 knockouts. He's uh, he's coming to look for the knockout too, so Rivera can't get over anxious and uh, throw out, out of content. He needs to stick to his game plan, as we've seen in the last fight also. Final moments of our opening round. March 14, PBC returns to Second FS1. Down. James Kirkland will take on Marcos Hernandez in a middleweight dual life from MGM National Harbor in Maryland. The co-main event features on being a Montes de Nunes, a 2016 Olympian. He'll take on Justin Deloach in a 10-round welterweight matchup. That is on March 14th on FS1 here. So looking forward to that night of action in MGM National Harbor on the East Coast. Here, Ron two, Ray Flores, Keith Thurman, Anthony Durrell, Marcos Villegas, Jordan Plant, along with Felix De Jesus. Guys, through the first round, what did you stop, see out of Michel Oh, Watch your head. Uh, just him going out there Box. trying to fill him out, see what Montanaro has. And this round, he's stepping forward a little bit more and throwing a little bit more power punches. They both actually engaged quite a bit already in this second round, um, in the first 30 seconds. As if almost saying, like, you know, the first round was slow enough and it's time to pick up the pace. Well, this is an event of third fight here in the United States. The first 14 fights were staged in his home country of the Dominican Republic. During that time, he went 14 0 with nine knockouts. His record now stands at 17 0 with 11 knockouts. Meantime, for Fidel Maldonado, who's been a pro for over 10 years, he said he learned to be patient and to box use his skills instead of engaging in a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. Yeah, Maldonado, dad said he's uh, been in the gym, he's learning a lot more, not to just sit there and slug, but box a little bit, not get hit as much. And he's doing that, he's been circling in the ring, he's utilizing his jab. Earlier on, he's, he actually threw a body shot and then held, you know, so I believe that he's trying to use everything, listen to his trainers, and just trying to be a little crafty and um, give as much challenge to this young fighter as he possibly can. Physically, Rivera looks to be the bigger of the two, and there was even a consensus amongst the Maldonado Jr. camp that he could go down to 130. Yeah, but they said he's comfortable at this weight right here. They said he never, he always fought people a couple weight classes above his weight class. So he said he's real comfortable here and he's going to show that in this fight. Well, he's been in the ring against the likes of, you know, lost to Amir Amam. Also came up short against Fernando Carcamo where he had his jaw broken in his hometown of Albuquerque. And you know that Albuquerque, New Mexico is a hotbed for talent in the fight business. And incidentally, Maldonado Jr. sparred at the age of 14 with Denny Romero. When you think of the top boxers from Albuquerque, you think of the late, great Johnny Tapia and also Denny Romero as well. You definitely do, and that was a good left hand by Maldonado. That kind of stunned uh, you did better. momentarily. Thank you. Well, certainly Maldonado has gotten the respect of Rivera as we head towards the third round. Hey. Hey. Caicedo, the trainer for Michel Rivera. You know Caicedo, he was the lead trainer to Luis Ortiz. Also, Juan Carlos Payano as well. And Herman Caicedo, who I think is one of the most underrated trainers in boxing, is very high on that man, Michel Rivera. He knows he has. He knows he had in front of a future world champion. And uh, he's he doing his best in his ability right now to, to make that mark for his coach. 
On the corner of Rivera, they told us in fighter meetings yesterday, the focus against Maldonado is to use the distance and also attack the body of Maldonado. And those are wise words, especially when you know that Maldonado can take a bit of punishment. You don't come from Albuquerque and not be tough. I've never seen a fighter from Albuquerque or New Mexico for that matter, and they haven't been tough. That's true, that's true. Maldonado, you know, I mean, he's making his uh, presence felt. He's been moving around. And he, he's been doing it for 10 years. Uh, that, that, should, that says a lot right there. That says he's a veteran. You know, he's doing something for 10 years. Come on, man. What I like about the fact that they are competing here at 135 is that there is quite a bit of talent, young talent, at 135. I mean, Javante Davis is the name that comes to mind as he just went up to 135. So, you know, there is so much talent that we see in the lightweight division. You know, you also have the likes of Vasily Lomachenko as well, Teofimo Lopez. So, um, lightweight division certainly live and well and has quite a bit of talent and good young talent as well. You better try to put his name into that mix. Definitely, he's trying, he's trying to get a world title. As he said, like three or four fights, he won a world title shot. But he has to get past a lot of not our first. And I think he uh, really needs those uh, three or four fights, you know, 17 to no. You know, he's still got a little bit more uh, growth and maturity uh, before he's truly ready for that shot. When he's only 21, so it's like, you know, okay, you want to move him quickly, but let's pump the brakes a little bit and have him deal with guys oh. like Fidel Maldonado. Yes, tonight oh. is a terrific platform. I mean, he's here, co-main event. You know, he's got a, this crowd, and he's got an experienced fighter in there. You know, we're looking forward to a possible 10 rounds of great boxing. Beautiful body shot right there. Good right hand by Michel Levet as he comes forward under a minute left here in the third. Maldonado, though, no slouch whatsoever. He's in the midst of a three-fight win streak, trying to take it to four. You know, some people might be saying that Maldonado's uh, not technically winning, but, you know, there's moments where he is outworking Riviera. So, you know, from, from that perspective, you know, it's down to the judges and how they feel. Anthony, do you agree with that sentiment? I do. I do agree with it. Uh, it it's the way the judges are sitting, you know, the perspective of the punches, the land of punches. If his head is snapping back, if the body shots are clean, and uh, it, it's, it's real close on my head. A straight left that connected by Maldonado, but Rivera is focusing on the body of Maldonado. And we're in the end of round three here in Biloxi. When the sports world has been waiting for Saturday, February 22nd, buy it on pay-per-view or the Fox Sports app. Guys, Wilder Fury number two is in here soon enough. Stop! Stop! That is the fight that I'm going to make. Yeah, uh, we're pushing. Fox. Electricity up, yeah. in Vegas will be at a fever pitch, but right now, round four focusing on the lightweights. Michel Rivera, the undefeated prospect who's trying to graduate to being a contender, going head to head against Fidel Maldonado, who has won three straight from Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> There's a right end of the body by Rivera. And you see Maldonado, who is trying to get back in the mix again. He ate a right hand. That's the punch he's been looking for all day. He's not even really throwing that jab. He's kind of just putting that left hand out there, lining up that uh, straight right hand. And it was, it, was, it, was, it was slightly uh, Just an awkward punch that he's throwing right now. But that jab is very ineffective. It, it, it's just there to look for the right hand to the body, look for the right hand up top. I agree with you. Just, to set, right him up to, by just to set him up to go through something. Rivera with a lead right hand. He's starting to find a home for that lead right hand. Yeah, and he's, and he's putting out that paw jab consistently. And even though it's not a real jab, what he's really doing there is he's mixing the slow with the fast. And, you know, it's a, it's a tempo thing, and that's how he's able to sneak that right hand right down the pipe. And he's comfortable oh. in there right oh, now. He's a little oh. tense the first go around. Now he's comfortable in there, and he's doing what he needs to do. He's sticking to the game plan of, you know, what they had. 
a little tricky movement there by Maldonado. He just pivoted one direction with the other. Well, Maldonado is sticking to his game plan of boxing, and Rivera is trying to get him to engage more, but Maldonado is so focused on staying on the outside and just boxing, but he eats two right hands in the process. Definitely, he's doing his best. He wants to move around, he wants to box. You know, he's working off that jab. He's constantly circ circling off to his right-hand side, which is the best for a southpaw, uh, making, trying to make him reach. Right now, he's moving back to the left. You know, technically, um, that's not what you want to do as a southpaw because he's moving back into that right hand. But so far, he's not getting caught with anything too devastating. No punching. I think he got caught with a couple right hands the there, right on the end of them. Final moments of the fourth between Michel Rivera Five. and then Maldonado Jr. will come back with the fifth round. The prospect looking solid. Right here, Maldonado, he just uses a little bit of tricky footwork trying to catch him off guard, but the young fighter, he blocked it. He was prepared for it. But it's those kind of tactics that he's going to have to rely on if he wants to be victorious today. Well, entering into the fifth round, okay, very astute of you to be able to point that out because you typically see that in the later development of a fighter, but you're seeing it now with Rivera, who's only 21 years of age. Well, you know, that just proves um, that this is this is his sport. This is boxing. You know, he had a tremendous um, amateur background. He's been around with uh, tons of great fighters. You know, uh, he's got uh, great fighters to look up to, mentors. Keep it clean, keep it clean. And he's a very confident young man. When we were talking to him yesterday at the uh, fighter meeting, like you said, he he learned English, so he was speaking to us in English, and he's just really looking forward to putting on a great performance and growing his fan base and becoming more popular in this sport of boxing. Anthony, what would you like to see more from Fidel Maldonado? He's having success, but not much. Uh, just counter punching more. Uh, doing like Keith said, you know, step to the side and fake him out a little bit and, and shoot the left hand because a left hand fighter fighting a right hand fighter, you can get that left hand. There's a right hand by Rivera backing up Maldonado who shakes his head as to say he's okay. But Rivera is starting to pick up the pace here in round five. 100 seconds left in the fifth. Yep, I think he knows Maldonado can't hurt him, so he's a, just pushing him for pace and I guess trying to get him tired and, and go for the stoppage. Pick him up. Pick him up. Slightly a low blow there, warning by the referee. Well, for Maldonado, he had gone almost three years without a knockout victory. When we asked him about what that meant for him, he goes, it was good to be able to have that feeling again. But he just got tattooed with a big right hand, and Maldonado shaking his head, but he is retreating backwards. Yeah, there was a couple of big right hands. I think it was three there, and they were, they were a left hand by Maldonado. So you can't fall asleep on this guy. He still has, like I say, 20 knockouts. You can't fall asleep on him. Guys, the only thing that I like are in threes are tacos. I like three tacos or more with every meal. But again, that's another topic for another day. Yeah, definitely a little bit more action this round. Stop! Come back. Box. Fidel Maldonado Jr. Michel Rivera. Maldonado trying to upset Rivera. We already have one upset tonight with Clay Collard finishing off Ray Wajardo in the second. Maldonado still very much in this lightweight co-main event here from Biloxi, Mississippi. What a start to 2020. A big left hook as we head towards the end of the fifth. Five. Back here in Biloxi, Mississippi, the Beau Ravage Resort and Casino. We are through the first half of the flight in our co main event. Here's Marcos Viegas. Ray, I have it uh, 50 to 45 for Michelle Rivera. I had a swing round in round number two. I felt it could have gone uh, either way. I think overall, when you look at the fight, who's landing the more damaging punches? Who is landing the cleaner punches and the, and the punches that are getting the attentions of the judges? I think at this point, it's Michelle Rivera, and that's why he's up in this fight for me. Thank you very much, Marcos. Oh, oh, we talked about those punches oh, oh, landing. 
The veteran ended a fight high, 16 punches in the fifth. On the contrary, for Maldonado, he's yet to land more than seven punches in any round, much thanks to our statistician, Justin, for giving us those gems all night long. Justin Goodman right behind, right to my side, and does an excellent job, as does the entire crew, here on this Super Bowl weekend, the Super Bowl tomorrow, live on Fox. Yeah, I got to say that Maldonado, you know, he's putting up a good effort, but, you know, he's just moving around the ring, you know, occasionally getting popped with these right hands. But when he gets caught, you know, it's kind of like a clear punch that's hitting him. And even though he's throwing little flurries, mixing in and landing a few punches of his own, it's not really standing out. So I can see uh, that verdict from him. Would you want to see more of a sense of urgency? Rivera is... The, obviously the A-side, he's the, trying to become a legitimate contender. But for Maldonado, they have him be more busy because he's on the brink of potentially becoming a journeyman if he's not successful tonight. Yeah, and you, and you have to. It's the second half of the fight. You have to know that you're down, especially in the first half. You gotta pick up the pace right now if you're Maldonado. What's startling to me, Keith, is the fact that Maldonado, and easier said than done, hasn't landed more, in, hasn't landed double digits in the fight in any one round. Well, yeah, that's, uh, those stats are true, you know, because there were rounds where he was throwing plenty of combinations. Stop, oh, oh, but that also stop, just shows stop, you stop, that stop Mikel doing your elbow. Riviera, his defense, you know, at 21 years old, He's very alert. He's very calm in there. He's very poised. He keeps leaning forward, leaning back. He puts his hands back up. I mean, he's, like he said in the fighter meeting, he said he's a smart fighter, and he's showing that it's to us tonight. Rivera is always in a position to punch for the most part. He never seems to be in a bad spot in the ring. His ring IQ is very impressive. Yeah, he's very aware in there. He's very uh, aware of what, what's going on, where the punches are coming from, especially with a, a, a veteran like Maranaro. Uh, he's, he's right in the pocket, slipping punches, and countering back with his own punches. The way I would categorize Michel Rivera, who is undefeated, is he is a solid, fundamentally sound fighter. Does he do anything great? The jury's still on on that, but he does a lot of things very well. Almost like a lightweight Tito Trinidad. Well, simply, I agree. Not with, obviously, not the power, but certainly has some characteristics. Now, Michelle Rivera and Fidel Maldonado Jr., round seven. This one's scheduled for 10. Rivera is close to the body, answering back is Maldonado. There you go, Stop! No punching, no punching. You know, because we're watching lightweight, you know, the one thing I can say about Riviera is that, you know, he's kind of doing a one-punch thing at a time. You know, he, he's being very crafty. He wants to be very accurate. But I would kind of like to see him put a few punches together. Maybe just a simple three-punch combination. Well, 91% of the fight has been fought from distance. He better do a very good job with the jab, and he just tattooed Maldonado with the right hand. Yeah, Well-placed counter right hand. And that's what he was waiting on. He's waiting to set up a counter punch. He's throwing a, a jab that doesn't mean anything. He's waiting to counter punch. He just did that with that right. Is that why Maldonado is reluctant to throw? Because anytime he throws, he absorbs or eats a counter right hand? And it could be. He, he, he knows the, the, uh, he's so fast that he got to be tenant to come in or even throw anything to get there. I think that's where Modern Iron need to stay is in the inside instead of the outside. Pause. We're at the halfway mark of the seventh. Michelle Rivera, who's undefeated 17 and 0. There's a left hook on the top of the head of Maldonado. He follows it up with a right to the body. And now the pressure is intensifying slowly but surely from Michel Rivera towards Maldonado. A little talking in the ring, too. The fighter's going at it. I 
Colorado said it, it wasn't hurting. It would be significant for Ivetta to finish off Maldonado, especially at this stage of his career. Maldonado has been stopped twice in his career. Three right hands, but like I mentioned, there's no left hook, there's no follow-up. You know, the young fighter, I believe that, you know, especially if he wants to get this guy out of there, I don't think it's gonna be one simple punch. I think it, it's, it's gonna have to take uh, possibly two. Boom, Punches boom. and bunches. Undefeated, just 21 years of age from the Dominican Republic, said it meant a lot for him to see Jason Rosario upset Julian Williams back a couple weeks ago. And now we'll send it to Jordan Pine, who's standing by with Herman Caicedo, the trainer, Michelle Thank you. Herman, it seems like he's pot shotting and not really putting combinations together, but when he does, he has success. So is that what he needs to do to finish this fight? 1,000% he has to put the combos together. Unfortunately, the, the kid is, is uncomfortable. He's a little bit all over the place, southpaw, so it's, uh, it's a little uncomfortable. But, yeah, when he does uh, put combinations together, he has a lot of success. He has no answer for him, and he needs to do that. But, you know, he's crafty, so Fidel's crafty, and uh, he's proving it that, you know, he can, uh, you know, make it difficult. Thanks, Coach Ray. Thank you very much, Jordan. Now, when it comes to pot shotting, what does that mean for our viewers? Just hitting one shot. One shot and go. One shot here and one shot there. It's not putting combinations together with what he needs to do, what he's been saying the whole time. It's like a metronome versus a drum line. Tick, bop, 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 instead of du -du -du, du -du -du, du -du -du, you know. But his trainer, knowing his fighter, he says it's the southpaw stance and it's the movement that's making his fighter feel slightly uncomfortable in there. So. Once again, this is a great matchup for the young fighter, uh, for him to get this kind of experience to further his development later on in his career. When it is a whole thing, and Keith, you pointed out, a trainer who knows his fighter, and it's clear that Herman Caicedo and Michelle Rivera have a very good partnership together. And there, oh, there's that a was an right overhand, overhand right that Go. momentarily stunned him. Oh, I think he's still hurt. I think it was an inch away from a knockdown with that kind of right hook. Well, boxing is a game of inches, even centimeters at times. Maldonado is one rough, tough customer, but tonight he's matched up against Michel Rivera. And I just think Maldonado need to get on the inside. That's where he's going to have be effective as in the inside, not on the outside. Riviera is looking for counter punches, so he needs to stay on the outside for that. Now, the old Fidel Maldonado, he's been a pro for 10 years, he gets backed up with the right hand, would try to crowd Rivera, would try to make it a tough and physical and grueling fight. The new Maldonado is focused on boxing, and I think that game plan is working against him. I think so, too. I think he needs to go back to his, to have the way he used to fight, and maybe he'll have some su success. He's in deep trouble now. Two big right hands, and Ivetta pouring on the pressure against stop, Fidel stop, Maldonado. Stop, stop. He still was pot shot. Two more rounds to go between Rivera and Maldonado. That's the way, that's the way you do it. He can't handle your power, he can't handle your power. So, just let loose and let him stop him. Do okay. not Bam. give him any gifts. Felix De Jesus, our translator, doing a great job. Ball for Rivera. He landed 40 total punches, rounds one through four. 81 total punches, 66% connect percentage from five through eight. So he's clearly getting a lot more comfortable. And I think he'll try to finish him this round. He has three minutes to finish him. I think he'll, he'll go for it. Well, his trainer was just telling him, you know, you got it, you know, put the punches there.
you can hurt this guy. He said, but after that statement, he said, do not give him any gifts. So he's still encouraging his fighter to be smart enough. Well, it is calculating aggression, not getting erratic, staying composed, but going to work. And I'm very impressed with his composure at uh, 21 years of age. For Fidel Maldonado, they need to have more of a sense of urgency because you don't get many opportunities like this, especially after suffering, you know, more than three or four losses. And you, and you gotta put the punches together. He's still pot shot a little bit. If he put the punches together, he'll get him down there. There's a right by Rivera. You know, the movement of Maldonado is showing some difficulty for Riviera, but, you know, he's not moving his hands, and with that, he's not going to be able to impress the judges. We are coming up on the halfway point of the ninth round. Michel Rivera is controlling this fight. And literally, Rivera is controlling the pace, the distance, and doing what he wants to do inside that ring. He surely is. I mean, he's been composed from the first bell, you know? And even though he's fighting the veteran, you know, he's leaning on him. He's giving him a, little, a few tricks in there. For Maldonado, I'm surprised you don't see more of a sense of urgency from Maldonado Jr., who you know is very tough and gritty and will make you work. But could it be the case that the event is just too much for him? Yeah, he's right there. He heard him right there with the left hook. Big right uppercut by Ivetta that found its mark. There goes a little bit of that urgency you were talking about. Well, he tried to push it a little bit, and then he got lit up with the right uppercut. And Ivetta, good body work as Maldonado continues to get backed up. I think it would just be tough to get him out of there with one punch. I think, like keep saying, you need to throw punches, uh, combinations, twos and threes to get this guy out of there because he's waiting on that one punch, knowing nothing is coming back. Final stages of the ninth round. It has been all Michel Rivera controlling this co-main event here in Biloxi. That's the end of the ninth. Maldonado continues to laugh, but I guess he likes taking punishment. The example there. Just, just, just noticing the fact that he's getting hit, and he thinks he can get by from that, but he can't. He's there all night for it. And going to the corner of Fidel Maldonado Jr. Hey, let's go. Nice and tight. That one combo always. Hey, come on, let's climb that fucker. Here. Okay, you need to get your don't give him no rain here. You step over them. Last round, come on. Last so, round. So leave it here. Just leave it here right now, son. Hey, give me a big breath. Give me a big breath. When you hey. say no shots, turn them. It's okay. Get some more yeah. water. Give me a little more. Hey, I'm going to go now. Right now. Okay. Everything you love right now. All the babies right here. All the babies right here. Marcos Vegas, how do you have the fight scored thus far, Marcos? Ray, I got a 90 to 81. You know, overall, it's just been uh, Nicole uh, Rivera, who's uh, landing the, just the better shots. It's just, for Maldonado to win rounds, he, he has to put more than just one punch here and there. You know? um, a lot of these punches aren't having uh, the effect that he wants to coming into this fight, and I think he just got to put them together if he wants to win uh, the remainder of this round. Maldonado came out fighting. He came out knowing he's down, knowing he needs to knock out the win. And his trainers were just saying, you know, you, you need to do it, you need to let it all out. So, you know. It just shows that even though he's being dominated, stop, stop. it's just the type of fighter that he is. You know, he, he wants it. Regardless of if he's climbing Mount Everest, you know, he really wants to just come back and prove himself in this matchup. Well, he gets tagged with the left hook from Rivera. It's the thought process. It's better for me to go out on my shield instead of go away slowly into the night. So Maldonado, you know, was going to bring his best. But his best tonight is not able to handle and compete with Michel Rivera. Yeah, but he's doing his best to close the show. You know, he's showing that he can be in the ring with pretty much anyone. Oh, there it is. Oh. Shot down goes Maldonado. 
That was right on top of the temple. You can think see how going to stop it. Michel Rivera going on the attack. Can he finish off Fidel Maldonado Jr.? Rivera stop it. tagging Maldonado. Rivera unloading and Keith Hughes waves it off. This one is over. Michel Rivera gets an impressive victory by stopping Fidel Maldonado Jr. here tonight in Biloxi. Michel Rivera goes out, dominates Maldonado Jr. and gets the finish. We take a look at it. Boom! Clipped There's him right on the right chin. Cross. Clipped him right on the chin, right where he needed to be. And that one punch put him down. But it was that punches and bunches before he threw that that put him down. Right on the chin, Maldonado went to the canvas. There you saw the look. And here is Rivera going to try to close the show. And he does it impressively. Welcome back to Biloxi, Mississippi. Michelle Rivera with a 10th round stoppage over Fidel Maldonado Jr. There is Fidel Maldonado Jr. not happy with obviously the result, the victorious Michelle Rivera. Rivera obviously very happy with the result. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes one minute, 40 seconds of the 10th round. Referee in charge, Keith Hughes, waves off the contest for your winner by technical knockout, Michelle Lazarza Rivera.